Some transport proteins do not have a channel or pore, but instead bind molecules very selectively and change their structure to allow them to pass to the other side of the membrane. These bind and release conformational transporters can be classified as either uniport, symport, or antiport, depending on the number of types of solute molecules transported and the respective direction of transport. One membrane transport protein found in the cells of the liver functions to shuttle glucose between the liver and bloodstream and is an example of a uniport transporter, for it moves only one solute. The direction of movement is passive, or with its concentration gradient. A good example of a symport conformational transport protein is the sodium glucose transporter found in the renal epithelial cells of the kidney. This process is not passive, where the potential energy of a steep sodium gradient is dissipated and used to drive the movement of glucose against its concentration gradient. The sodium-potassium ATPase that is responsible for maintaining the membrane potential so important for neural cell function is an example of an antiport transporter and also demonstrates active transport. The free energy of ATP hydrolysis is used to drive the movement of sodium and potassium against their concentration gradients, maintaining a source of potential energy to be used by other co-transport proteins, such as the sodium glucose transporter we discussed earlier. The import of dietary glucose for use by tissues of the body brings together all elements of conformational transport. In this process, intestinal epithelial cells use uniport, symport, and antiport mechanisms to move glucose from the intestinal space into the bloodstream. First, a sodium-potassium ATPase transporter uses the energy of